Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native father of the effortless English system. I train you to speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. And now's a good time to do it. New Year's coming. Time to commit and don't quit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program. Commit and do not quit. All right, today we're talking about insecurity. Insecurity, the opposite of security. We talked a little bit in the last show about security and stability. Security and stability, right? The, which means you kind of know what's going to happen, right? You can predict, you know what's going to happen. Security, it's, it's also another synonym, another similar word is safety, safety, stability. These are all similar words with similar meanings, similar ideas. So security, the idea of safety, that you feel safe. And we're going to, insecurity is the opposite. It means not safe, not stable. We're going to talk about that today. We're live on YouTube, a little different time today. It's morning here in Japan. I got up earlier today and decided to try to do a show in the morning. The babies are playing in the other room. You might hear them yelling and <laughs> making noise. <laughs> All right, so welcome. Let's talk about it, security and insecurity. One of the main ideas, actually probably the central idea of my business English course, the central idea, the main idea under or behind the course is that working is fundamentally insecure. What, is that? what do I mean? I mean the job market, the job situation, the economic situation in the world is basically is fundamentally insecure, meaning not safe. It's not safe anymore, right? Back in, uh, I don't know, even my dad's generation. So when my dad, when my father was starting work back in the 60s, right? They had a lot of job security. There was the idea that you could join one company and stay at that company your whole life, right? And he had this idea. He joined IBM, the company IBM, a big, very successful computer company. And he had the plan to work his whole life there. And he did work a long time. But guess what? Things have changed. Things changed a lot. And he lost his job eventually there. IBM changed their policy and they started letting go of people. They started to get rid of people, especially older people who were making high salaries, like my dad. And of course, every company does this now. And so now I think we all know there's no safe job, no secure job, no job is safe. I don't care what you are doing. I don't care what company you work in or what your, you know, your job is. It's never safe. Things can change very quickly. You think you have a safe job. You think you have a very safe position. And then suddenly you're, it's gone. All right? Things change in the economy. Technology changes. Companies suddenly get a new policy. So you can lose your job anytime. This is what I mean. This is the central idea, the main idea of my Business English course, which is about helping you helping you with your career, helping you make money and have a secure career. There are no secure jobs. So what's the difference? Career is, is kind of your lifetime of work, 
right? Which will include several jobs, many jobs, right? It's, that's your career. It's kind of your own life working history. That you can make secure. We'll talk about how to do that a little bit today. But a job is a specific position, right? At a specific company. Never secure. You can always lose your job. You should have this mentality in your mind. If you are working, you should think, I could lose my job tomorrow. I could be fired tomorrow. I could be laid off tomorrow. Laid off is a nice way to say fired. Laid, fired usually... You're fired because you did something bad at the job, right? You had bad performance or something. Laid off just means the company's trying to save money. So you might be very good at your job. You might be do like a top performer at, right at the top, super good. But the company decides to save some money. So they cut the top performers. They cut the people making the most money and you're gone. It could happen tomorrow. You never know. Right? The economy, the economy could crash tomorrow. Tomorrow, we could have an economic crash. The stock market could crash. There could be a global economic meltdown, problem, crisis. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next month, anytime. There's no job security at all. You cannot depend. You are crazy. You are crazy if you think you can depend on your job, that your job is safe. Okay, there's no position that's safe, no kind of job. Some people think, well, I'm a computer programmer. That's a necessary job, so it's safe. It's not safe. There's a good chance your company might decide to hire programmers from another country that are cheaper, and then your job is gone. There is no security. There is no security. You cannot rely on a company. You cannot rely on a job. Your paycheck could disappear anytime. This is reality. This is reality. Too many people ignore this reality. They try to pretend it's not true. And then they're surprised. Oh, I've got a baby screaming. So what to do about this is the next question. And that's what my business English course is about. My business English course, I'll be sending out a, a nice discount code for everybody on my email list next month. VIP members already, they have gotten my business English course. I gave them a great discount. And now you, everybody else, you will get a nice discount in January on my business English course. You have to join my email at effortlessenglishclub.com at the bottom of that website, there's an email form. It's free. Join my email list. Join my email course, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. So this course is about how to deal with this real situation of no security. So how can you create a situation where you don't need to stress? You don't need to feel stress about jobs. You don't need to feel stress about money. You don't need to feel stressed about losing a job. So you feel very calm and relaxed. Even if you were fired tomorrow, you're not stressed. You don't care. No stress at all. That's career security. So maybe you're getting the idea here that where do we find security in life? This is more of a general idea, not just work and money. See, if we depend on the outside, outside people, outside situations, we will never be secure, right? Like my dad, when he was younger, he depended on IBM. He depended on the company. He thought the company would give him security. And of course, they did not. He was depending on something outside of himself. So where can we find security is inside. It's our own thinking ability. It's our skills. It's our personality. It's our toughness. It's our creativity. It's our experience. It's all of these things. These things are where we can develop more security. One second.
Sorry, guys. I got a screaming baby. It's very distracting right now. I, it's hard for me to concentrate. <laughs> <sighs> All right, we'll take a break for a second. Let's see if the baby's calmed down a little bit. I'll just say hi to everybody who's saying hello. We got lots of people from different countries saying hello. Let me read some of the hellos. Lots of people. Looks like Latin America is well represented. Brazil and Panama and, of course, here in Asia. Indonesia. So hello and welcome, everybody. I'm just going to wait a few minutes and hopefully this baby stops screaming and I can concentrate. I can't concentrate right now. <laughs> it's too loud, too much. Ay, ay, ay. So we'll just say hello and chat for a minute. Colombia. Anderson saying hello from Colombia. Panama. Very nice. Easy and fun English says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Let's Lou Castro says hi from Brazil. Great. All right, we can try again. Okay, so what can we rely on? Where do we find security in general in life and also especially in your career? It's uh, yourself, right? It's your in, it's inside. We've got to focus on inside, depend on ourselves, the stronger, right? It's, it's the idea of do we want the world to be easier or do we become stronger? Well, we can't control the world. We cannot make the world easier. It's impossible to do that. So what the intelligent thing to do is make yourself stronger, make yourself stronger. So my business English course is really designed to make you stronger. So you are stronger in your career, in your working life. You don't need to fear. You don't need to be afraid of losing a job. Why? Number one, you learn how to do resumes, cover letters, job searches, and job interviews. And you learn how to be very, very good at those things. Right? You'd be much less nervous if you know, if you know you are really, really, really good at job interviews. If you know you're really good at resumes and cover letters and job searching. If you know you're very, very confident, I can definitely get another job very quickly. Anytime I want, I can get a job because I'm so good at interviewing. I'm so good at resumes and job searching. So no fear. Well, then you have security, right? Because you know you can depend on yourself. So if you lose a job tomorrow, but I don't care. I'll go get another one. It's easy, All right? That's security. That's where you can feel low stress. You can't depend on one job. That might disappear any time, but you can depend on yourself by developing these skills, these very important skills. I believe... You have two ways to be secure financially in terms of work. Number one is become an entrepreneur, have your own company. Most people don't do that. So what's the second way? The second way, be really, really, really good at job searching, right? If you're not going to make your own company, that's okay. Then you need to be super, 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 super good, super skillful at the skill of job searching, right? That means finding jobs. It means doing a marketing campaign, basically, to get job interviews. You know how to get a job interview with using your resume, using letters, phone calls, maybe. You are really fantastic in the job interviews, so you get job offers. You need to be very good at these things. This gives you power in your career. It means, number one, if you lose a job, you get a new job easily. Number two, it means you're never stuck at a job you don't like. So maybe you get a job, you try it, you don't like it. You don't like the boss. The work is boring, whatever. The pay is not enough. So you're not stuck. What do you do? Go get another job. You're good at job searching. You're really good at it. So... 
You don't need to stay in a job you don't like. Just go get another one, right? Using your kind of superpower of job searching. And so this is why in my Business English course for uh, a, a big section, like the first third maybe of the business course is focused on the skills of job searching and how to be great at job searching because it's so, so, so important for your career. This is a skill that will help you your entire life at any age so that you can always get a better job or another job if you need it. So I highly recommend if you are working that you learn how to be great at job searching, right? So that means using letters, using resumes, using phone interviews, using face-to-face -face interviews, all of these things so you can get jobs quickly and easily. Then you feel secure. Then you're not nervous anymore. You don't the fear goes away. It's so important. And this happened in my own life. I used to, I used to be so, so nervous about, and, and I used to be so stressed out about trying to find a job, about job interviewing. I hated it. But the thing is, when I was young, I changed jobs constantly. I, got, I would get very bored at jobs very fast, even ones I liked, kind of. Um, and I, a lot of jobs I hated and I would quit. So it meant I, it was kind of good news, bad news. The bad news was that I was forced to do job searching all the time, right? And I was stressed about it. It was terrible. But I guess the good news was I had to learn how to do it. I got a lot of practice doing job searching because I was doing it constantly. And so eventually, little by little, I got better and better at it. I learned new skills. I learned new strategies. Started reading books about it. <clears throat> and I finally figured out a really good system. And when I finally, when I finally became good at job searching, when I became very confident, so much of my stress about money, about working, disappeared. Just disappeared. Because I finally knew, ah, no worries. It doesn't matter. I'll just try this job. If I hate it, I'll quit. I can quit a job anytime I want. If I get fired, I don't care. No fear. No fear. All the fear about working disappeared. That was very nice. It took a lot of years to do that, but it was great. And I would like you to experience that same thing. So we have to find the security in ourselves by becoming stronger, by becoming more skillful, right? Working on ourselves. Then you don't worry about the economy. Then you don't worry about your company's policies. You don't worry about any of that anymore because now you have focused on yourself developing these great skills. Of course, there are other skills for becoming really good at your job, for making more money in your career. So you're in a job and you know how to move up, move up, move up, make more money. Number one, make more money. But also when you move up, usually the jobs are more enjoyable. They're less stressful. Not always, but a lot of times the jobs at the bottom are the most boring, the most difficult, and they pay the smallest amount of money. So it's nice in a company if, if you can get a higher job because many times you'll have a better schedule, you'll have a better working environment, the job's more interesting, it's more enjoyable, and you get more money. So that's what we all want. So... Security, where do you find it? You find it in yourself. You have to focus on yourself, your skills, your abilities. That's where you must focus. That's how you become secure. And you can let go of all that nervousness and fear. All right, let's get to our comments and questions now, live. Right, so here we go. This is a good example. Ricardo Charles Alam says, in Brazil, there's a kind of crisis in the economy. Uh, there are few jobs available now in many types of industries. Exactly. Well, this, this happens in every single country, okay? It comes and it goes, it comes and it goes. This kind of thing happens all the time. So you don't want to be worried about that. So there are always jobs available, but sometimes there are fewer jobs. It means more competition right? So guess what? You need to be 
at the top for job searching and job interviewing. You need to be super good at getting jobs. It's a, it's its own skill. And when you become one of the best at getting a job, then you don't care. You don't care if there's a crisis in Brazil. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect you. You can still get a job easily. It affects everybody else who's not good. People who are not good at job interviewing, people who don't understand how to do a job searching campaign, who don't know how to do uh, strong, powerful letters, phone calls, resumes, interviews. Those people, they're going to be stressed. They're fighting and fighting and fighting for a smaller number of jobs. But not you. Not you because you're really good. You, you know you can get a job anytime. Okay, there are always jobs. There are always jobs somewhere. It's just sometimes there's more competition. Let's see if I understand this question. Abel, Pedro de Lima, de Lima sorry, says, um, what advice do you have for us about having a small job just to support someone so someone's living, increasing it by day by day. I'm not sure I understand exactly what you're asking, but uh, if you're asking, is it okay just to have a, like a small job, like a part-time job just to live, you know, to have a simple life? Yes, that's great. Why not? You can, you can, you, you can have any kind of job you want. If you want to work full-time, you can. If you want, if you prefer to have a simple life and have a lot of time, more time, free time, then yeah, just get a small part-time job. I, I did that for many years. That's, that's great. Okay. Nice. Janina says, I work in a daycare. I can stay till I retire. But next year, I'm going to be a bilingual teacher at a private school. I'm a bit insecure because it's new for me, but it's a dream. So I'll dive in. That's it. Just dive in. Why not? Again, no fear. Don't be, don't be afraid. Dive in. Dive in. Learn how to get new jobs. Dive in. Try new stuff. That's the other thing. When you're not afraid, when you have security inside yourself, you're not afraid to try new things. If you get bored, try something new. Why not? You can change careers completely. You can be a teacher and decide, ah, oh, now I'm going to be an engineer. Doesn't matter. It's up to you. You don't need to be stay in one thing your whole life unless you like it. If you like it, then do it. Yeah, like, so here's kind of a common thing. Palmerian Cell says, I don't quit. I don't quit my job because I'm la too lazy to look for a new job. Right. Because it feels like it's too much work. You're not confident. You feel It's stressful. I have to do a new test, an interview, other interviews, training. It takes a lot of time. Right. So get good at it. If, if you want to change, like I, I, I always hated being stuck in a job. I, like I said, I got bored. Two years was my maximum in, in any job, even a job that I didn't hate. <laughs> that was actually pretty good and enjoyable. But after two years, the problem for me was that after two years, I became bored. So even if I liked the job, well, after two years, eh, now it's boring. It's the same thing every day. So I still quit and would go find something new. Um, now, other people don't get bored so easily, so that's okay. But the point is, it's a it's it's bad to be in a job just because you don't you're you're lazy or you're stressed about job searching, right? Then you're stuck in a job. You're not there because you like it. You're there because oh, I don't want a job search. So that's why just get good at job searching. And it takes a while. It takes practice. But um, once you're good at it, then you don't have to feel stuck anymore. You're never stuck again in a job that you don't like or that you're bored with. Yeah, well, Pavel Leandro says, another important thing, in my opinion, 
is mastering our knowledge and abilities. Of course, yes, of course, you know, job searching skills, but of course also the skills of your own job. Be really good at your job. This is also part of my business English course where I talk about this and you learn about this more, how to do that. But yeah, be one of the best. Be great in your job. Of course, that's another form, another kind of security. Not just being good at job searching, but also being truly great at what you do. If you're a teacher, be a great teacher. If you're a programmer, be a great programmer, right? Hilda Castro says, I'm from Mexico. This insecurity to lose our secure job is because in school, we learn that we need to find a job and stay there all of the life to get a paycheck. Well, exactly right. That's that's the school training. And it's bullshit. We all know it's bullshit. No job is secure. So they're teaching, uh, as usual, they're teaching nonsense and in the schools. Okay. Hey, Jay, why are your previous episodes deleted in the Google podcast? I have no idea. That's Google. I don't control it. Use um, Podcast Addict. Use a different app. Ricardo, no problem. Vivek says, I am from India. Uh, love your work or your job, but don't love your company. We have to make ourselves stronger in terms of skills. Thanks, AJ. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a true statement. Love your work, love your what you do, but don't love the company. That's all right. There's no loyalty. Okay, no company is loyal to you. Loyalty, you know, you're loyal to someone and you expect that they also are loyal to you right? But this is never true in our modern economy now. These companies don't care about you. They will cut you anytime, okay? I don't care how good the company is. I don't care how nice it seems they are, how much money they pay, how nice everybody seems. If they want to save money, they'll cut you with no emotion. They don't care. They don't care about you, so you can't care about them. Don't be loyal to a company. It's insane. Be loyal to your family. Be loyal to your friends. Do not be loyal to a company. Easy and Fun English says, I prefer to work in different places rather than stick in one place. Me too. <laughs> I always get bored easily when I work in one place doing the same thing every day. Yeah, me too. I had the same problem. Well, I don't know if it's a problem, but I had the same thing in my career when I was working is that I just I couldn't do it. Like my maximum, the maximum was two years. Many times I quit jobs after six months or something. Um, sometimes I just thought they, they were, I didn't like them. But even if they were decent, I still got bored. Some people are like that. Some people are not like that. Some people don't get bored so easily. Uh, Vivek, how do I, says, uh, how can I stay motivated while searching for another job? Well, success is motivating. That's what I find. So get good at it. Learn the skills and get good at it. And when you're good at it, you get a lot of job offers. And then it becomes enjoyable. It's enjoyable when you get a lot of offers and you have a lot of choices, right? When you're stressed and you're like, oh my God, oh please, just one job, please. That's stressful. It's no fun. It's not motivating to do it. You don't want to do it because it's stressful. But when you're getting a job offer, another job offer, another job offer. And now you're like, hmm, which company? Do I want this one? Do I want this one? You can even negotiate with them and try to get more money. You don't need any of them. So that's a great situation. It's motivating to be good. It's motivating to get success. Okay, Jao Paulo Dillon says, uh, do you think it's fine to get a job and stay there or do we need to be an entrepreneur? You don't need to be an entrepreneur, okay? I've learned this myself. Everybody is not 
going to be an entrepreneur. A lot of people don't have the mindset to do it. Uh, so that's fine. If you don't have a mindset of an entrepreneur, then you get a job, learn how to job search, become really good at your job. You'll be okay. You'll be fine. Uh, but some people are, you know, or should become entrepreneurs. Uh, pe people like me, probably, who get bored easily, who jump around lots and lots and lots of jobs, who hate, who hate jobs, who hate working, who hate having a boss. If you hate having a boss, if you hate having a schedule from somebody else, you know, telling you when you have to work, if you hate that stuff, then you should be an entrepreneur, become an entrepreneur. If you don't hate that stuff, it's okay just to work a job like most people. And thank you, uh, Ricardo, for the super chat. That's very nice. Thank you. Uh, most people in the USA have more than one job. Is that a good strategy? Well, I'm not sure if most people do, but... Um, I, I, I guess you're talking about at one time, at the same time. But some people do work more than one job. Like they'll have uh, several part-time jobs. I don't, it's, you know, it's, it's fine. It's not, it's not wrong. It's not right. It's just if, if you want to do that. Like I have one of my good friends. She, uh, I think also she got bored a little bit. But so she would always have two jobs. I remember sometimes she had three jobs at the same time, part all part-time. But... She liked that because it was variety, right? So it's not just one job all the time. Each job was kind of different, so she didn't get so bored. Some people like that. For me, it was I I never liked working so much. <laughs> so, eh, whatever. It's your choice. Oh, I like this. This is a nice phrase. Rasha says, "Don't be scared, be like a tank. Nobody can hit you." Yeah. Kind of like that Rocky mentality. I found my job three years ago. Didn't speak English at that time. By the way, thanks, Mr. AJ, for this system. You're welcome, Rasha. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like that idea. Be like a tank. That means the stronger you make yourself, the more skill you have, the more confidence you have. You become like a tank. Nothing can damage you. Prabhudev says, AJ, excuse me, <coughs> throat's dry. You've been doing this for years. What is your secret for consistency and discipline? <coughs> excuse me. Well, number one, I like it. I really enjoy doing this. I, I love being an entrepreneur, my own boss. I love it. I love teaching independently. I can teach how I want. I love doing this podcast because I talk about things I want to talk about. So for me, the secret was becoming an entrepreneur. When I was an employee, I was not consistent and I was not dis so disciplined because <clears throat> I, didn't have any, I didn't have enough freedom. Uh, I had to follow the schedule of you know, my boss or whatever, the company. I had to follow their methods for te teaching many times. Um, yeah, so I just didn't enjoy it so much. But now that I'm my own boss and I have my own company, <coughs> excuse me, I might have to get some water in a minute. <clears throat> anyway, that's I think that's the secret. That's why it's motivating now because now you know this is my company and I get to do what I want and it's it's creative and I can change things and when I want to. So I love it. I, I, when you love what you do, it's easy to be consistent. It's easy to be disciplined about something you love. You don't even really need much discipline. If you love exercise, for example, let's say you love walking, like I love walking. I don't need discipline. I don't need discipline to be walk to walk. Okay, it requires zero discipline for me, zero discipline to go walking every day because I love it. I want to do it. If I don't do it, I, I feel kind of stressed out. I need it. I want it. On the other hand, my mom, uh, who was really lazy, she needs a huge amount of discipline just to walk. She has a hard time just walking. She's so overweight and in bad shape. So for her, oh, you know, walking is this painful, terrible, hard exercise. So she needs this huge amount of discipline to do it. And she doesn't have it. 
So that's a big thing in life. If this is one of the reasons people say, you know, in in your career, that you hear the advice to do something you love. Uh, number one, it's more enjoyable, so it's a happier life you have. But number two, you'll become better. You'll be better at that job because you won't need discipline. You won't need to force yourself to do it. You won't need to force yourself to become better. You won't need to force yourself to improve. You'll love it, and so you'll want to do all of that stuff, and it will happen more effortlessly. Yasin says, uh, do you prefer working a job that you like or working a job that's available, readily available in your country and is guaranteed? So security or enjoying the job? I, I always choose enjoying the job. I always chose in the past. Chose, I prefer. I don't want to work. I don't want to do something I hate. I don't care if it's secure. I don't care how much money it, it give, pays. Yeah, so here's a good here's a good example. This is a job, a position. Most people think this is a secure position. Herdesh says, I'm working as a software engineer uh, for 15 years. So that sounds very secure, right? Software engineer, if you listen to the media, oh, that's the perfect job. There's so many jobs. It's, a, it's secure, secure. But now my company is going to shut. The company is going out of business. Please suggest my English is not confident. Well, there you go. So you got to learn. Get the business English course. Learn how to job search. Get another job. It's no big deal. Okay. There are many companies out there. Just go get another job. It's okay. Nothing to stress about. Don't get stressed. Maybe the next job is better. Right? You might get a better job and then like it more and make more money at the next job. So these things can actually work out quite well. <laughs> Rasha says, I live in America. My kids speak English, but they don't teach me to speak English. What should I do? Yeah, they're not going to teach you. <laughs> you have to do it yourself. Okay, so listen to this podcast. Follow my system, you know, get my lessons. Uh, listen to my podcast, read books, all the things I say in my show. You have to do it yourself. Your kids are not going to teach you. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't ask them to. It's just stressful. They're, they're, they'll become annoyed. Uh, just do it yourself. You got to do it yourself. Um, you know, this kind of a few questions along these lines, similar to this one. I have a job in, uh, I want a job in mechanical engineering. Um, I'm new in America. How to find it? Well, it's that's a huge. I get my business English course and follow that system that I teach in the business English course because it's all about doing this and it will help for sure. And especially in America because it really fits the American culture quite quite well. But don't stress out. You'll get a job. Anil, should we stay in our own country or? go to other country to get a job i don't know up to you so uh, you're if you want to travel and experience you know like i i got jobs teaching english in different countries because i wanted to travel i wanted to see different countries so i worked in korea i worked in japan i worked in thailand uh, it was a way for me to travel and make money and because i didn't have a lot of money if you don't care about that if you don't want to live in another country then just stay in your own country so it's up to you. Ajay, is it Ajay or AJ? Is it pronounced like my name? I'm not sure. Pawar says, sometimes interviewers ask silly questions which make no sense <laughs> for the position we applied. Yes, they do. And uh, actually, again, I talk about this in the Business English course. Uh, sometimes the silly questions actually do have a reason. Sometimes the interviewer is just not good. They're bad. And they ask stupid questions. But sometimes the question seems stupid, but they're they're looking for something. Usually they're looking for your emotional reaction 
They're testing you with something that's stressful or strange. They're trying to see how do you react. They're not, they don't, they're not testing your ability in your job. They're t testing your emotions. They're testing your communication ability. They're testing how do you respond to stress or a surprise. So that they, so sometimes they, these do have a purpose, those kind of strange questions. All right, let's see. Okay, this is an interesting question. It's no big deal. Ennis Elkin says, uh, trying your power English set. Some of your classes require visualization in my mind, but I can't because I have a fantasia, which I don't know what that is, but I guess you can't visualize in your mind. So my mind's eye is blind. I don't know anything about it, but just don't worry about it, okay? Just can, just, they'll still work. The lessons will still work. They'll, you, you can still just, you know, listen to the mini stories and learn the vocab and repeat, repeat, repeat those lessons. Answer the questions in the mini stories as quickly as you can. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, so Elena, hey, Elena, good to see you again. How to educate yourself for investing, for investing, investing money. Where can we find information about investing? How to be smart in this area? Thanks for any advice. Okay, this is a big topic. And um, how to educate yourself. It's not easy. I would recommend, Tony Robbins has a good book. I think it's called Money. I like it because the mentality is, is a, it's very conservative. It's a safe mentality. It's not about making huge amounts of money. It's about protecting yourself mostly. So that's a good one. Start with that book. That's got some good ideas. And then you just got to read a lot of books. That's maybe step one. But step two is the main thing is you have to start getting experience. You have to actually start to invest. And you're going to make mistakes sometimes. And sometimes you're going to lose money. Definitely this will happen. So the most important thing is protect yourself. You, you, when you make any investment, you must always be sure that you guarantee that your loss is limited, right? You don't bet all of your money and then possibly lose it all. You never do that. You always have to protect it. So like there are many ways to do it, okay? You can read a lot of books that will tell you there are all kinds of different ways to protect your risk so that Yes, you will lose money sometimes, but you don't want to lose a lot of money. That's the key thing. You don't want to lose all your money. Now, one way to do this is you simply only invest some of your savings. So let's say you have, I don't know, you have $100,000. Don't invest $100,000 because don't risk all of it. Maybe you only invest $20,000. The other $80,000, you just keep safe in a bank or something. And that's just, it's just cash, basically. And yes, you might, it's not earning money and inflation, blah, blah, blah. But basically, it's safe, right? So the 20000 you invest. Maybe you buy stocks. Maybe you try to do real estate. Whatever you're trying to do, investing. But now, you even if you lose all of it, even if you invest badly, you lose 20000 That sucks. That's no fun. But you still have eighty. Okay, you still have most of your savings. You didn't risk it. You didn't lose everything. So that is the basic mindset you need to have, in my opinion, is to protect it. And of course, even with the twenty thousand, if you learn some investing skills by reading books, maybe go to seminars, you can also invest in a way so that you will not lose all twenty thousand, even if you make a very bad investment or bad luck or something that you still will keep some of it. So that's kind of the, I would say when you're starting, really always to have that mindset and to always be thinking of, you know, limiting your loss, protecting your loss, protecting your risk. That's the best thing to do. But uh, for specific skills, it's very tough. Stock market is very dangerous right now. In general, it's dangerous, but especially now I'd say. Um, but, you know, all of these things have risk. So you just have to, you got to learn from someone who knows, I, I can't teach you that. I'm just not good enough at it.
Couple more and I'm gonna go. Pretty cat says. Uh, I want to okay the study I want to study the subject I want to study is astronomy. I can't study it in my country. There's no opportunity to study here. Okay, so or get a job. So you'll have to live in another country, I guess. Friends say, don't think about it. I need your ideas. Well, if you can't do it in your own country, then you're probably going to have to go abroad, right? Number one, for, well, first of all, you can study astronomy. You can study independently at home, okay? You don't need to go to a university. You can read books on astronomy. You can get online and you can take courses. You could probably take MIT courses online for free. Um, astronomy courses and just do those courses. So you can teach yourself a huge amount of astronomy and physics and the math that you need. You can do all of this independently at home. And you and you should. If you really want to learn astronomy, you should be doing it yourself, not just waiting to go to some stupid university. Um, so what, by learning all this yourself, then, of course, because you have these the, the real skill and you're really getting good at it, then you can, after that, apply to some program somewhere. Because it's probably, if you want a job, astronomy is probably a, uh, one of these things where you do need a degree. So you're going to have to probably, sounds like, I don't know what country you're from, but you, you're probably going to have to go abroad, go to another country and study. So I don't know. You can go to Europe, you can go to America, you can go to wherever. I don't know, astronomy, but Russia. Find a... Do, you have to do research and you'll have to go abroad and get into some astronomy program and get a degree. And then you probably have to work in another country. So if you don't want to work in another country, yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> but if you're OK to go abroad, then no problem. Just do that. Hey, cool. Pablo with a nice um, success story. Pablo, good to see you again. I used to be a VIP member, always listen to you. Now I have moved to Canada with my family. I was impressed how good and effortless I can express myself in English thanks to you. That's fantastic. I'm so happy. This is great. This is why you're doing it, right? So Pablo can now talk to people in Canada effortlessly. Excellent, Pablo. And that's really, especially you because you're you know, you're one of our regulars. Very happy to hear that. Stay warm in the winter in Canada. Or, I don't know, enjoy skiing or something. Okay, a couple more and then time to go. Okay, Arif says, uh, let's speak, this is an example, someone who wants to study abroad. I finished studying medicine in Syria. Now I want to complete my studies in America, but I suffer from a language problem, English. How do I overcome this? Number one, here's the way you do it. Number one, you have to just build your general English, your conversational English. That's what effortless English is for, okay? So, I don't know, join my VIP program. Uh, listen to podcasts, read books, you know? That's step one. When you're conversational, your main normal conversational English is good. Then number two, then you have to focus on medical and science and biological vocabulary. So you're going to read a lot of books about medicine and science. Just pop, not technical books, I would say, in, that, in step two. More popular books, but just books that are... Uh, about the body, like nonfiction books, about health, about about medicine, about all of these different things, but not textbooks, okay? And all you're doing is just trying to build up your vocab connected to medicine. Also, try. To, I'm sure you know there must be some podcasts about medicine and about um, you know, for doctors. So you you'll have to search and find those, but find some podcasts that are about medicine and listen to those every day. Find some audiobooks about medicine. Listen, read those and uh, read the books and then listen to the audiobooks every day. 
and just build, 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 build up that vocab. And then you'll be able to communicate decently when you do your studies. So I don't know. If you do this very intensely, like six hours a day, eight hours a day, maybe you need six months for all this. Okay, I'm going to add, this will be my last one. Abraham says, I'm good at job hunting. In 10 years, I've changed six organizations. Nowadays, I'm frustrated. They ask me, why did I resign the jobs frequently? Yeah, they used to ask me that too. No big deal. You just learn how to give a good answer. You know, by the end of my job, my, by the end of my um, working career, meaning jobs, working for other people, I kind of just didn't care anymore. <laughs> I got to a point where I was just so sick of it that I just started to be really honest in the interviews. Like in the beginning of my career, I would try to give the perfect answer and a lot of bullshit, honestly. And at the end, I would just be honest and they would ask me and I'd say, well, I get bored. I, I got bored at my, I get bored at jobs easily. So I'm looking for a job where I have some freedom and where I will be challenged enough that I won't be bored. And then if that where I'll have an opportunity to, you know, to take on new things. Just, just be direct with them. Tell them the truth. That's what I would do. Just be, if you tell the truth confidently and you're good at what you do, you'll still get a job. They'll still offer you a job. So that's what I would do. That's my best advice for that question. All right, guys, it is time to go. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Number one, you can join my VIP program. I recommend commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com and also join my free email course there because I'll be sending that information about the business course uh, in January. So now's the time, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Okay, lots of love to you all and I will see you next time. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, I'm not sure. Get on Gab and I'll tell you. Bye for now. See you later.